Hey, this is Tim. Today we're going to go through how to program a basic start stop in the three main languages of the Connected Components Workbench software, ladder logic, function block, and structured text. And guys, please don't turn the comments into a ladder logic versus structured text versus function block war. We're going to have some videos later on that are going to go through key times that one is obviously better than the other. And this one, I probably could argue function block or ladder, but they all have a place. The main purpose of this video is really just to start touching on the other languages, whether you're familiar only with function blocks and you know you need to learn some about ladder or you're all ladder and you need to learn some about function blocks and structured text. We're just going to use this as a really basic primer to talk about the three languages. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. For this video, we are using a hybrid trainer. This is actually our Compact Logix trainer with a micro 800 on the side of it because we're getting ready to do some videos on communicating between the two. And I just didn't want to tear down the setup. We're going to start in the Connecting Components Workbench software with a new program. And we'll just call this Languages. And we're going to go into Controllers, Micro 820. And we're going to be using a 2080 LC2020 20 QWB. Select it and we'll add it to our project. And first thing, let's go ahead and add our Ethernet configuration because this is the most common thing I get a call about is people downloading programs without their IP configured and can't get back online with it. So it's going to be 192.168.110 with a subnet of 255.255.255.0. And let's right click programs and first let's add a ladder program. And we will go ahead and call this ladder. Then let's add a function block diagram and we'll call this function block. And finally, let's add a structured text program and we'll call this structured text. So there's our three basic programs and we already have an exercise on programming a start stop in the ladder. So we'll put that one in first and I'll put a link to this whole series in the description where you can see exactly how we came up with how we're going to program this. We're going to start by dragging down a direct contact examine if closed and I have, in fact I'm going to go ahead and flip our trainer around here, I have button one wired to input zero. So that's going to be our start button. So we'll go over to our IO tab and go down to IOEMDI00. And we're going to go ahead and label that as our start. And then let's go ahead and label input number one as our stop, which I have wired to our red button. So that's going to be our stop. And then while we're in here, let's go ahead and make input zero, which I have wired to our green light. That's going to be our ladder motor. And then our yellow light is going to be our function block motor. And finally, our red light is going to be our structured text motor. And let's select the start button. And then let's add a branch and we'll drag that start into it. Now let's bring down a direct contact examine if closed. And this one is going to look at that ladder motor. And let's bring down a direct, another direct contact examine if closed. And this one will look at our stop. And then a direct coil output energize. And this one is going to look at our ladder motor. And this is the basic start stop that we've done several times now. And if you just read this in plain English, you can kind of come up really quickly with the function block version of this because this is saying if our start button is on or our ladder motor is on and our stop button is on, turn on the ladder motor. So let's go to the function block and see if we can figure this out. 
So first we'll go over to our toolbox on our right side and let's drag in an instruction block. And let's type or because in our ladder one, that was the first thing is we had our start button or our motor running. So or and right there is going to be an or logical. We click it. And then we're going to need to put some variables on the front end of this. So let's drag a few variables in. And the first one is going to be that start button, the same start button that we're using in our ladder program, because it is a global variable. It can be used by any of them. Of course, we can drag this where we can see them. And let's bring another variable down. And we go over here and we can look this time, not at our ladder motor running, but let's look at our function block motor. And then if we pop back over a ladder, that takes care of our OR statement. And then we had an AND the STOP button. So let's go over here, toolbox, and drag down another instruction block. And this time, let's type AND. And there it's going to be. And we can just click here. A couple things. One, you can click here on the O1 and just drag over to the I1. We're going to stop that. Or if you drag it, the instruction kind of line it up closely, it'll automatically do it for you. So that's really nice. So let's drag that out so we have enough room for a variable. We don't have to. Actually, let's leave that close just so you know that you can do that. Is we can just leave that there and let's bring another variable down. You can bring it down here and let's look at that stop button. And now we click from here, we go up to here and there we have it. Now it's kind of going over this instruction. It's not real neat. So for all my neat friends out there, we'll drag this on out and then we'll drag this up and there. That kind of looks nice. So I might want a little more space and just so we see that that or is not associated with this instruction. But yeah, you can drag them anywhere you want. And okay, so our output off of that is going to be that motor. So let's grab another variable and actually I'm going to drag this one down here and let's put that function block motor and put a connector. So there, there is the exact same motor start stop circuit in function block. So this ladder rung right here is really the equivalent of this function block. Now let's do it in structured text. So let's open up our structured text program and you can see this is just your basic editor where you can really type anything. And if we go back to either of these diagrams and just speak it out, we can come up with roughly what the structured text is gonna be. So here we're saying if our start button input is a one or our ladder motor, or in this case, we'll say our structured text motor is a one, and our stop button is a one, then turn on the motor. So if we go to structured text and we just start typing if, right away it's going to bring it up for us. So there is our if, and now we need our start button. So start typing start, and it's going to bring it up. Now, when you select this, even though it says start right here, it's only going to bring up the inputs. So we're going to need to put a comma in here. So if we just put parentheses star, that's going to start a comment. And we'll just put start button. And then star parentheses ends that. So the next thing was or. So if you start typing and you're not sure, there it's going to be right there. Or... And this time it'll be our structured text motor. So just start typing structured because we labeled that a structured text motor. And again, let's go ahead and put a comment by that. Structured text motor. And then we're going to need an and, but just like in math where you had to have order operation, we kind of need order of operation here. And that's done with parentheses. So let's put everything we have so far on this if statement in parentheses. That's going to get it where it's going to evaluate that first. So either the start button or that motor running. And now we want an and. So and our stop. 
And again, well, let's go ahead and put a description on that. Stop button. And then once you're done with your conditions for your if statement, type then. And then type what you want it to do if it's true. So if it's true, we want that structured text output to be true. Now you can't just do an equal sign on this because the equals is a compare. We need to do a colon equals. And that's going to mean go write this value to that. So we want it to be true. And then most often I forget at the end of each statement like this, you need a semicolon to let it know that it's the end of that statement. And I didn't put a description on this one. And actually let's, let's leave the description off of this just so we can see where what's one, it's a little confusing, but also how we can navigate and figure this out. So that's going to make it true. If all these conditions are true, well, what's going to happen if it's false? Just like in all of our exercises before, if nothing is going to write to this, then it will never change. So we need something to make it false when these conditions aren't true. So we're going to type else. And that means that, okay, if these conditions are true, then do this. Else, which means these conditions above here are false, structured text motor is going to equal false. And don't forget your semicolon. And then when you're done with your if then statement completely, you need to put end if. And then at the end of this, you're going to need a semicolon. And actually, let's not even put the semicolon in because probably the biggest confusing part of structured text is when do you need a semicolon and when don't you? Because we didn't need a semicolon up here on this else statement. We didn't need a semicolon up here on the end of the then statement is when do you need one? Well, if you're not sure, just hit the build button here and it does a great job of telling you what you need. So down here now it says semicolon expected before this new statement. And that is on line six. And if we double click on it, okay, there is no line six. And so that tells us it's at the bottom. That one is a little confusing because really it, it's line five, but I'll put a semicolon right there and we hit the build button again, then it's gonna build just fine. So going back to the structured text here, the one thing that is a little confusing about what I've done here is that I did not put a comment on this output. So it's not real clear what this output it is. Also, yes, I did spell button wrong there. So let me fix that. So unlike function blocks and ladder diagrams where this text is tied to the tag, it's not in this case. So if we right click here and we go to variable selector, then we can see that is the structured text motor, but that text is nowhere tied to that in structured text. So this is our program. Let's go ahead and download this and see how it works. And if you need any help downloading your program or configuring your drivers or even creating a new program, look down in the description. We'll have a link to this whole series. Okay, so our program's downloaded and we press the start button and all three of our lights come on. We press the stop button, all of them come off. So our program works great. Now let's look inside of them just so we can see some of the differences. So we open up our ladder, our red indicators for the most part mean that the instructions are true. Now we're going to go over some times that it doesn't exactly work in later videos just to watch out. But for now, for this video, let's just say yes, red means true. So we need a continuous path of trues from left to right to get this motor on. So if I press the start button, then yes, our start is now true. We're continuous path from left to right. Our motor comes on. And when we let off of the start button, then we can see that it is now blue, which means it's not true, but we're getting a continuous path of trues from left to right through that seal in now. So pretty obvious for troubleshooting, whether it be that the stop button is stuck. And so we're pressing the start button and it won't come on. Or, you know, if we, press the start button and nothing's happening. Pretty easy to troubleshoot. And then let's pop on over to our function block and it's gonna be just as easy. Now, because of where I positioned this one right here, actually doesn't show a lot of the red there, but it does say true right there. Also, and this could be just my particular setup because I've never figured out how to do it. 
when I was offline, in fact, let's go ahead and go back offline. It shows my descriptions right here. But when I go online with the PLC, my descriptions disappear. Now, I believe this is more of a view issue with Connected Components Workbench. This is no, in no way a ding against function block programming. But that is one thing to be aware of is that, yeah, for some reason, the descriptions disappear when you're online. But all right, so we're showing true here on our stop button. We press the start button and yeah, we get a nice red indicator. And now we have a continuous path of red through our function block to our output, which is going to make that true. And of course, this is an or. So as soon as I let off of the start button, this top one is going to be false. But since it's an or, this is going to stay true. We have an and here of true. And so it's going to stay on. So really that one is very easy to follow as well. Now let's pop open our structured text and let's press the stop button and press the start button. And you'll see that there's no real indicator in the structured text programming of what is true and what is false or what is going on in the program. So it may take a little more thought to troubleshoot field devices. Now again, please don't get into in the comments about which one should be used. We're going to go through some great videos, show some great applications for each one. And yeah, this probably is not a great application for structured text, but I mainly wanted to use this just to show the three basic ways that you can program the exact same thing in the three languages. So play with these, kind of make sure you get a general grasp of how they work especially the structured text one, because it has a great editor with its drop downs as you're typing to recommend things. And you can actually do a lot of good data manipulation with structured text. So they all have a place. We're going to go through some really neat exercises coming up in them. So make sure you're subscribed. Again, please hit that like button and don't turn it into a big argument about which one's better, but I would like some examples that you think are really good in each language and to help people understand which one should be used in which situations. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.